Hey, we have this problem on the board. Sum of two squares, we have a squared plus b squared equals 1658. I got this problem on my webpage and I went and solved it pretty quick. I said a must be 41 because 41 squared is 1641. And then b must be four because four squared is 16. And then that, when you add them together, is 1658. And this would be a good solution, except for pretty much every number I calculated was wrong. So I had to start over and go to the beginning. The way I usually approach a sum of two squares is with the prime factorization of the number that we're trying to find. And in this case, it's pretty convenient because the prime factorization is gonna be pretty simple. We can find it just by noticing it's even, just dividing a, a two into this. We're gonna end up with 829. And it happens that 829 is prime. So I'm not gonna prove that or anything, but that makes the prime factorization pretty simple. Next, we're gonna do something that's gonna seem kind of bizarre if you haven't seen this, but we're gonna rewrite this. But we're gonna rewrite each of our terms here as a sum of two squares as well. So we're gonna write two as one squared plus one squared. And then we're gonna write 829 as 27 squared plus 10 squared. Okay, that's 729 and that's 100, which equals 829. How did I find this? Well, that was mostly guessing and checking or just noticing. If you notice that 729 is a perfect square, then maybe um, this will stick out for you. And then we have this identity that allows us to basically distribute and rewrite this value here. So we can rewrite this as one times 27 plus one times 10 all squared plus one times 27 minus one times 10 all squared. And then if we simplify that, this is just 27 plus 10, which is 37 squared. And then this is just 27 minus 10, which is 17 squared. But if you actually multiply that out, that's 37 squared is 1369. 17 squared is 289. Adding those together gets us back to 1658. So this is our answer right here. And I think what we need is we need more explanation for this. If you're not familiar with this, we need to explain this piece right here. It's called the Brahma Gupta Fibonacci identity. And let me just clean up the board and we'll show why this works. So showing that this works is gonna be really easy because all you really need to do is distribute on both sides and you'll see that we have the same thing. So let's just do it out though. So we'll just do our distribution here and we're gonna have a, a squared C squared. I'm just gonna write that as AC squared plus BC squared plus AD squared plus BD squared. Then on the right side, we'll do, we'll have to square out each of these individually. So we'll first square this first piece and we'll have AC squared plus BD squared plus two ABCD for the middle terms. And then squaring this piece, we'll have AD squared plus BC squared. And this here is gonna be a minus two ABCD. And the beauty of that, of course, is these two terms are gonna cancel and we're left with, just notice that this side is exactly the same as that side. One thing that comes up though is that the solution that you get for the sum of two squares is not necessarily unique. If we go back to the original problem, we remember we had two times 829, and we expressed this as one squared plus one squared times 27 squared plus 10 squared. And so from this formula, you'll notice that because it's addition, you could flip the, flip the terms Right, and if you multiplied it out a different way, you'd get two solutions, and so the solution wouldn't be unique. But in this case, there's only one way to write 829 as two squares, and it's 27 squared plus 10 squared. And then having two ones here, it doesn't matter if we flip these, it doesn't matter how we multiply this out, we get the same answer. So that's how we end up with a unique solution to our original problem. Again, I got this problem from my quiz, sum of two squares. I'll provide a link in the description. It actually, in the help, it has a lot more details, but there's a lot more that goes on with these where you can have, these problems can have no solution, they can have multiple solutions, and there's a lot more background that I just didn't get into to try to keep it simple for this video.